Hello everyone. Well, my theme for a PowerPoint this month is underrated herbs and the herb I've chosen is the globe artichoke with the subtitle more than just the liver, although its liver role is very important. Now, as you can see, I've got the beautiful photographs there of globe artichoke growing in the field. So you see it's that unexpanded flower head that we eat as a vegetable. But the part that the herbalists use is, I guess, the bit that the farmers throw away, and that's actually the leaves. So let's start off with some basics about this very important herb. Uh, firstly, uh, I was taught it was uh, Cynara scolimus, but it's now called Cynara cardunculus, a ver variation uh, scolimus. Uh, so, but you will see it referred to the, in the literature still, and I'll show you some examples as Cynara scolimus. The part used is the leaf, as mentioned, and it's got a well established rep reputation for stimulating bile and urine flow. Now, the urine flow reputation is not so current uh, with modern Western herbalists. But uh, it was certainly well established earlier, in, in, you know, in the 20th century. It does have some restorative liver properties, and and there are quite a few clinical trials that show that it can lower cholesterol. So its medicinal properties have been known since antiquity, and it was particularly prized in the 16th to 19th centuries. Fell out of favour a bit in the early 20th century. But then uh, come the 1930s to the 1950s, French and Italian scientists started re uh, researching it uh, and uh, confirmed the uh, choleretic activity, which is the increased bile flow, uh, confirmed the uh, diuretic activity. Um, and uh, they, even, they even knew about it low in cholesterol in, in that 1930s to 1950s period. Um, interestingly, when it acts as a diuretic, uh, it appears to help the excretion of nitrogenous waste, you know, urea and other nitrogen-containing substances in the urine. And this is of particular interest in a modern context because it's kind of like almost a, a kind of de detoxification, and it was confirmed in that period, and it's kind of been lost now in, in uh, modern prescribing. Um, there were even studies from around that time that showed anti-toxicity activities uh, like uh, chronic arsenic poisoning and other kinds of toxins like the drugs they were using for syphilis. It seemed to reduce their impact on the liver. So if we look at the indications, though, that have been supported by more recent clinical trials, and this is from principles of practice of phytotherapy, so it's up to 2012, is it is the hyperlipidemia, um, LDL cholesterol, reducing that and reducing triglycerides. Non ulcer dyspepsia, which is general uh, upper indigestive problems that's not related to ulcers or even reflux. Um, and any conditions requiring an increase in improved bile flow, which is cholesterol, and indeed it does have anti emetic activity. So, Things like functional bowel disorders further down, constipation, dyspepsia, which is, of course, more uh, first half of the digestive tract, and functional gallbladder conditions, nausea, vomiting, and flatulence, and so on. And it's the only herb we have that has very robust direct clinical trial evidence in human beings that it improves bile flow. They actually put probes in to harvest the bile after they gave the globe artichoke to the volunteers, and it did increase bile flow. And more importantly, the concentration of the bile remained the same. So it wasn't just a more dilute watery bile that was being excreted. It did actually increase the excretion of, of bile acids into, into the gut. Now, if we look at functional gallbladder conditions and choleratic activity, there's something that I don't think is as widely recognised as it should be about the globe artichoke, and that it's brilliant for people with gallstones. Not for expelling them, 
you know, I've seen all this stuff online about olive oil and lemon juice and mm, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, send me your feedback on that one if you like. Um, but what we're talking about here is as someone who has symptomatic gallstones being reverted to someone who has no problems. Now, when you consider that probably half the adult population are walking the streets with gallstones that are not causing them any problems, this is a great way to delay uh, surgery in patients because, of course, the modern thinking is just take the gallbladder out. And I've had much success with this. So, yeah, I combine a globe artichoke, say, with some, some uh, St. Mary's or milk thistle with a bit of dandelion root, uh, some fringe tree, Corydalis is a great sort of uh, smooth muscle relaxant, so it, it helps there too, and maybe some chamomile. But that formula or similar, maybe some fringe tree, did I mention fringe tree? Uh, that formula or similar has, has helped countless patients uh, and their gallbladder problems go away. So this is a very important use that's based on this clinically validated uh, cholerative activity. Now, in addition to those uses that I've drawn from principles and practice of phytotherapy that have clinical trial support, there are other uses. And you see there's a bit of overlap here, uh, choleretic, but also it's thought to have some cholagog activity, stimulating release of bile from the gallbladder. Uh, it appears that it might have a property of restoring the liver and protecting the liver. Uh, but you can see many of the other indications are as I've already described. The indication to lower serum cholesterol and triglycerides especially appears to be work in overweight patients. And there's even a suggestion, perhaps if I go, if I go uh, back on that one, There's even a suggestion that a globe artichoke can help with weight loss. Although when they did a meta-analysis of that, uh, it, it didn't actually show a benefit overall, but maybe in some subgroups. And then a more traditional use that I believe is still relevant, and especially that research from the 1930s to the 1950s that, that found this diuretic activity, and particularly with the excretion of nitrogenous waste being enhanced by the urine as a depurative. And that's a traditional term uh, for cleaning the body, also referred to as blood cleansing. And for that, you can consider it for rheumatic conditions, osteoarthritis, chronic skin diseases, and even issues like excessive body odor. So you may be thinking, well, this is pretty fantastic. This is a great herb. It must have some really unique, uh, very powerful phytochemicals that it contains. But when you look at it, it's, it's fairly standard uh, for what many herbs do contain. It's got the sequiterpene lactones, which are the bitters and, and glycosides of them as well. And the particularly important ones, are uh, active components are these polyphenols that are derivatives of caffeic acid and, and particularly it's, uh, it's cyanarin, one, three, Dicaphoral uh, clinic acid is thought to be key, but there's a whole class of compounds, and then it's got flavonoids, and the main flavonoid uh, is luteolin and its glycosides thereof. So we have to say, when we look at this picture, uh, you can't see anything obvious other than perhaps the bitterness, because we know bitters do stimulate bile flow. We can't say that there's anything actually very uh, uh, definitive to explain some of the potentially profound properties of, of, of the globe artichoke. And I think we have to say, we have to come to the conclusion that it's all these constituents working in a, a synergistic or a harmonious combination with each other that deliver the therapeutic effect. Or the skeptics might say, well, look at that, you know, it's no more than eating a vegetable. Not quite true, but yeah, maybe. Um, uh, so it doesn't work. It's all hyped up. But uh, I'll, I'll be able to show you some high-level evidence now that's been generated that shows 
really does work. And it certainly works in my clinical experience. So let's now look at this recent research. And what this study found, it was an Italian study, they found that globe artichoke is a profound metabolic corrector. Uh, it was in uh, overweight to obese people, so people with BMIs uh, above 25 who had newly detected impaired uh, uh, fasting glycemia, in other words, a, a high, high blood sugar, fasting blood sugar that had been newly detected. So these were people who were developing uh, what's known as metabolic syndrome. And they found significantly favorable changes in blood glucose, blood lipids, in insulin, and waste reduction. So not necessarily reduction in body weight, but waste reduction. And that's from Globe Artichoke and, and fairly sort of what I would call standard doses of Globe Artichoke. So they used a, an extract. It was a dried extract, 500 milligrams. And I, I think I've done postings and it's certainly in my new, new book about how you interpret dried extract doses and translate that back to whatever you might be using. But it was about uh, 1,000 milligrams a day of dried extract. So that's roughly uh, being a five to one. That's about five grams of herbs. So that would be 10 mil a day of a one and two liquid of globe artichoke leaf. If, for example, that's you're using or the equivalent of five grams of dried artichoke leaf itself. And uh, yeah, that, that's getting to the higher end of dosing, but still uh, quite an achievable dose. Also, let's look at this high-level evidence of its benefits from meta-analysis. Um, meta-analysis of 14 trials show that globe artichoke significantly reduces triglycerides, total cholesterol, and LDL cholesterol. There is no significant benefit on HDL cholesterol, although some individual trials, especially in uh, cohort with metabolic syndrome, have shown uh, quite good increases in HDL cholesterol. If we look at the uh, uh, anthropometric indices, uh, a pooled analysis of 10 randomized controlled trials suggested that the globe artichoke reduced waist circumference only. It didn't help with body weight, but it got waist circumference down. However, subgroup analysis also found it significantly reduced body weight in hypertensive patients. But then if we look at glycemic indices, Pooled analysis of nine randomized controlled trials demonstrated that globe artichoke and, and products made thereof significantly reduced fasting blood sugar. And finally, and this is an important one, liver enzymes. Pooled analysis of eight clinical trials revealed that globe artichoke significantly reduced the concentrations of AST and ALT, and that indicates benefits in fatty liver and also probably some of these uh, reflection on that some of these uh, earlier uses of it being used as a, a protective agent for the liver so i'll just pause a little bit on that slide there though for uh, references you could probably pause the recording anyway see they're all fairly recent now, what about the effect of globe artichoke? You know, I, I mentioned uh, uh, there's been uh, quite a considerable traditional use and indeed clinical trials of the globe artichoke being beneficial in functional dyspepsia. And even when they analyzed some uh, cohorts uh, in those trials, also in irritable bowel syndrome. Um, this is an interesting study because it looked at the effect of a combination of ginger, which we know is a prokinetic, with the globe artichoke on gastric motility in uh, healthy volunteers. Again, another study from Italy. And it showed that the standardized extract of ginger and artichoke significantly promoted emptying, uh, gastric emptying in healthy old volunteers with no ill effects. And of course, all these things I'm talking about is not the globe artichoke vegetable, it's a globe artichoke leaf. So just to finish off, um, I would like to just reflect on this property of globe artichoke that's clinically verified to promote bile flow, cholaresis. Now, my friend and colleague Simon Mills is absolutely fascinated and indeed possibly obsessed 
with bio. And what we're finding out from modern research is the important role that bio plays in regulating a whole range of, of issues in the body. Um, you know, even issues happening in the brain seem to be regulated by bile acid metabolites, and they certainly do regulate uh, digestive function and, and digestive inflammation and what have you. So the take home message here is if you don't have enough bile, it's probably not good and you will probably age a lot quicker and experience poor health compared to someone who is producing enough bile. Now, the gut flora get a role here because it's these secondary bile acid metabolites that the gut flora produce are often, uh, in addition, regulating profound uh, uh, physiological effects in the body. So the take home message here is for optimal health, you need good bile production and often people with chronic constipation aren't producing enough bile. And so this herb, I believe, should also be elevated into the what, well, for want of a better term, the anti-aging category, but let's just say it's one of those terms that I believe has a significant role in extending our healthy lifespan. So let's all give the globe artichoke a lot more attention because I believe it is underrated and I hope after this brief presentation you'll be in agreement with me.